Hi, this is Paul Palmer. Yesterday I was teaching a class about um, the quality management system. But one of the areas that I was focusing on, pharmaceutical quality system, I suppose, actually was a, the full topic now. But one of the areas that I was focusing on was validation. And what I came to realize when I was discussing things with the students was everybody knows and understands the regulatory requirements. But when it comes to actually applying the principles of validation, when it comes to actually doing the work, when it comes to understanding how you set out your document set and how you use the document set after you've set it out, then, then we came to a few, mm, I wouldn't say difficulties, but a lack of clarity, I suppose, is probably the best way to put it. So what I thought I'd do today is talk about planning your validation in a pharmaceutical context, whether it be a machine, a process, a um, shipping route, maybe you're looking at implementing some new equipment for cold chain. So what do you need to do when you're doing your your preparation. Well, you need to know the scope, first of all. You need to know what it is you're talking about. And then you need to consider the different stages. You want to look at your um, factory acceptance testing. But what do you do before your factory acceptance testing? Well, you can't accept it at the factory unless you know what it is that you're accepting. So, of course, you need your user requirements spec. But how do you know what to put in the user requirements spec? Well, you need to know what the business requirements are, of course. So that's where you start. What are the business requirements for this product that you want to introduce or for this process or the, the change that you're making within your business? So that gets interpreted into the business requirements. The business requirements are interpreted into the user requirements. <laughs> the user requirements then usually go to the functional spec and then to the detailed spec but we haven't even started the validation. So how can there be so many steps already? Well, it's because you need to prepare. So once you've identified the equipment and you've got the factory acceptance test and it's been transferred to site, you've got your site acceptance testing, what do you do now? Well, you wanna plug it in, don't you? So plug it in, install it, set it up, bolt it down, whatever you might be doing with it. Basically, getting it ready to go. And then you want to make sure it actually works. Operational qualification. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then it works over time. Now, this is one aspect that I struggled to get the people involved to actually, I suppose, confirm for me or highlight before I, I gave them a prompt. So validation is, is operation over time, process qualification. You, you wanna make sure you have a full validation package and you wanna plan for it. And that's why we have the planning in the background here now. Because without a plan, how can you put all these different documents together? And then when you have them together, well, how do you know you met the user requirement spec? How do you know the factory acceptance test was accurate, was met the requirements? Well, you've got to have a report, haven't you? You've got to have an output. You got Maybe you're just writing the numbers onto the protocol. That's fine, but what about if something goes wrong? How are you gonna handle deviations? What are you gonna do next? How are you gonna fix it? How are you gonna move forward? Inevitably in validation, you, you're looking at the a new process, a new system, a new set of variables. So you wanna know what the critical controls are, the critical parameters. What are you gonna make sure that works? What tests have you good, are you doing across all the parameters to verify your design space? Is there one specific thing, one specific variable that determines all the rest? Maybe you intended to run at 60 packs a minute and actually the machine is designed for 90. But one of the inputs, one of the components that you're using will only hit 60 because you didn't buy it from the same source. Oh no, what are you going to do? Oh, well, we'll bring it down to the lowest common denominator. 
But if the highest spec part of the machine doesn't work at that speed, you're going to struggle all the time you've got the product and it's going to fail. So make sure it's compatible with cross components. And then look at the actual results. Determine what the best settings are. Make sure you look and say, well, that's what was planned. But based on the data, we actually recommend this in the summary part at the end. And then, of course, what else do we need to do? We need to review as we go along, don't we? We need to refer it to quality and say, can you sign off this stage? Can you sign off that stage? Can you sign off that stage? Because you don't want to find out at the end that you did the IQ, IQ wrong or even the factory acceptance test. And when you finish it, you say, well, validation is done, but it all failed. Well, that's really useful. You've only spent three months, six months doing all the testing, but because the first stage didn't work, well, you need to start again. And that's not really a good plan, is it? So that's why I wanted to highlight the requirement for planning. Make sure you plan for success. Don't just say, right, what are we doing now? Functional spec. Oh, well, we'll write one of them. You want your documentation set planned up front. You want to think about which stages in the actual testing are going to demonstrate that you met the requirements. You want to make sure that the outputs that you're recording are going to meet your uh, acceptance criteria. Because if they don't, well, what's the point in doing them in the first place? You want to make sure that you plan for success. When you're actually doing any sort of work, when you put a quality plan in place, when you define your protocols and your acceptance criteria, when you do your method transfers, don't just do the work. Think before you start. How is this going to demonstrate that it works? How is this going to show the team, the quality department, any auditors in future, any inspectors that come round, that we did the job right? that we planned for it, that we made sure that we were testing all of the relevant parameters to verify that we were working within the design space for this process. And that at the end of it, we've got a validation package that we can sign off and accept. So that's it for today. Make sure you plan. It's Paul Palmer. I'll talk to you soon.